Hello everybody. So we are at stock market FAQs part 3. Uh, we've already covered two videos so far. The previous videos cover some basic questions like uh, what is the stock market, what's the market timings, you know, what are mutual funds. And uh, here we're going to go a little bit into detail into a specific topic. It's called the fundamental analysis. So if you want to check out the previous topics we've covered, you can just check out the link in the description and it will take you right to the videos we're talking about. Hi there, welcome to Trademan's YouTube channel. My name is Kritesh and here is Karan with me and today we will be discussing fundamental analysis of stocks. But if you haven't subscribed to our channel, first of all subscribe to us. We are publishing very interesting videos on investing and trading and consistently on our channel. And I uh, have collected a series of questions that are common basic FAQs that everyone who would enter the stock market has wondered about. So these questions I'll ask Kritesh and he tried to answer them the best he can. Yes, <laughs> so uh, like right on the bat, what is fundamental analysis? Uh, so fundamental analysis basically means the overall analysis of the company. So if you are investing in stocks, any stock for long term, you are planning to keep it for six months, two year, three year, four year, you need to have good companies in your portfolio so that you can sleep properly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if the company is bad, management you do not trust, the company is continuously making losses. So in that cases, what will happen is like <laughs> you will not be able to trust that company. Yeah. So here comes fundamental analysis. You have to analyze the company overall from the, point of, from the point of view of its financials, profit and loss statement, balance sheet, financial ratios, valuation, management, competitors, economy everything that you can analyze about that one you have to analyze and in the end you have to be sure that the company is good enough to for you to hold for the long term so that it can give you good returns so basics of fundamental analysis is this thing that you have to do the overall analysis of the company before investing for the long term okay so that so basically like you not just lose money in a bad company you also lose sleep you lose mental peace so you want to avoid all those things from happening. So that's why we don't just look at the company. So the, there's a chances when the company does well, but the industry is bad. When the industry does well, but the company is bad. So those things can happen. Yeah, a lot of time maybe just because that industry is, company is in the wrong industry, which is not growing at this time. Look at the IT industry right now. Yeah, all of them are down, like <laughs> down are. bad. <laughs> so a lot of them might be, a uh, few of them might be very good company, fundamentally and all. But they might not be good performing because the industry is not doing good. Yes, because of what's happening with the US right now in terms of IT sector. So uh, we've already covered uh, covered this topic on our Instagram handle where we've shown how much of these companies depend on the United States for their revenue. And the numbers will shock you. And they're taken straight from the company's financial statements. So because they're so dependent on Americas, their revenues are down and that is again reflected in the stock price as well. Ha, so here if you are planning to invest for three months, six months, mm. maybe this industry might not be good for you. So not. there again industrial analysis will also come into overview yes. when you are doing the fundamental analysis. Yes, secondly, of course, it's we already kind of covered this, but uh, we'll just go into it a little bit into detail mm -hmm. as to why does it depend to why does it matter to an investor fundamental analysis? Ha, first is like a good sleep. <laughs> if you are keeping what one idea in your comp in your ba bank account, I mean in your DMAT account, here you know that the company is already losing its market share compared to Airtel, Geo, and all, and other. It has a lot of debt, yeah. loss making, and all. Sure. So you will not be able to sleep. In if I've invested one lakh rupees, maybe it will turn out to be zero rupees in five years. <laughs> it, could <be. laughs> it could be. So here, uh, the main reason is like. It's a long term investment and you want a good companies which grow over time. So in order to make sure that you get very good returns over time in long period, again, fundamental analysis comes in action. So uh, the situation we explained with IT stocks, see that is out of control. That is something that nobody would have predicted. But what you can do is reduce the chance likelihood of something wrong happening because we didn't do a thorough research. So imagine if you invested into any company and it starts going down. Only then people actually care what happened. What happens, huh? yeah. I mean, if some everything is doing good, then you won't care. Nobody but the problem questions. is like if you already have a debt of thousands of crores 
and the economy starts doing bad you are not getting more ex capital from banks or anything in that case the worst the stocks which are fundamentally unhealthy they gets affected the loss the most so their stock is go, will hit most and a lot of time they might not be able to survive a crash or recession a lot of time they will just went out of the business <laughs> so ha huh, but in the case of fundamentally strong companies they have a lot of capital they have a lot of reserves so that even 2 3 years of bad business is not going to wipe them out it's not going to affect them very much and when again the economy is back on track when again everything is doing good they will give you very good returns but for unhealthy companies that's not the case and another important point is also that banks believe in these companies so they do not mind extending them short term loans as well as long term loans so they trust the company add to the fact that these companies are big enough that they form percentages of indexes little percentages of major indexes so yeah, yeah. most of like uh, if you see blue chips these those are mostly the part of all the indexes you see even if the smaller caps if they are the part of mid cap 100 small cap 100 those are also like kind of trustworthy yes. smaller penny caps those are out of the context <laughs> well <laughs> they fall nobody is coming to pick nobody them. is coming to care about them a lot yeah. only the investors who have put their own money they care about <laughs> rest is like they don't care much on that so this it's, it's uh, better safe than sorry guys <laughs> uh, okay next question yeah very interesting what are the types of fundamental analysis there are two types of fundamental analysis uh first is qualitative analysis and second is quantitative analysis so in qualitative analysis all those things which cannot be quantified in numbers mm -hmm. those come in that analysis for example if you look into how big is the brand value okay. perfect example brand value okay. brand value and the stan unilever colgate uh, asian paints they have a very big brand value which you cannot quantize in number easily so that comes in a quantitative analysis similarly business model how will you classify like how good is the business model on yeah, you can't put a number on that exactly so it's again comes in the qualitative part uh, in addition to that intangible assets a lot of time the, uh, management of the company how good is the management is doing who are the ceo cfos how much is the competitive advantage of the company compared to its competitors and all so a lot of things which cannot be quantized in terms of numbers we perform in the qualitative analysis one of the most important thing here is the moat analysis advantage competitive advantage for a long term for the company second part comes the quantitative analysis so in quantitative analysis we looked into numbers so for example if you are looking into financial ratios like pe ratios return on equity debt to equity ratios so there is an exact number here Okay, like if the debt to equity ratio of a company is more than one, then it means that it has a lot of debt. You should avoid that one. Yeah, uh, if leveraged. it's it's a high leveraged one, generally you should cover less than 0.5. So these things can be quantized along with that. Reading the financial statements of the company, its balance sheets, profit and loss statements, its cash flow statement, and apart from that, valuation is again another important thing that comes into quantitative. Like how do you value that company? How much is the valuation? that also comes in the quantitative analysis so both this qualitative and quantitative analysis is the key types of fundamental analysis and you need to perform both of these right. if you are just looking into numbers if the finance financials balance it everything is good but if the company's business is not good business model is not good its management is not good its brand value is not good it's not going to help mm -hmm. and similarly on the other case if, if the if the company has a very big brand value but it's for now but its financials are not good it has a lot of debt and all yeah that's bad there are cases yeah. <laughs> biggest example is adani stocks <laughs> so again it can be dangerous for you in the long term so you need to look into both quantitative and qualitative aspect of the company before investing on to the next question this uh, is this is on the back of stock market lingo just like that we have fundamental analysis lingo so basic terms in uh, fundamental analysis that people should watch out for okay uh first of all you need to understand the financial statements there are basically three core financial statements profit and loss statement is the first second is balance sheet third is cash flow statement so profit and loss statement basically tells you like how much revenue you have generated how much expenses you had and how much was the overall profit after you reduced the expenses from your revenue so let's say if you made 1000 crores of revenue you sold cars of 1000 crore but in building that car 
and marketing them paying employees it costed you around 800 crores so if you reduce 1000 from 800 it gives you a profit of 200 crore yes. so all these will come in the profit and loss statement but it's not that simple i have just simplified it along with that other things will come like uh, gross profit operational profit taxes interest yes. so a lot of components are there but uh, basically profit and loss statement is how much profit you are making it is described in that statement I'm making profit it's clearly seen I'm making losses it's clearly seen it's clearly yeah. seen uh, next comes balance sheet so in balance it basically tells you how much asset you have how much liabilities you have and uh, overall if you minus assets from liabilities it tells you how much the equity shareholders equity is there so assets are basically like uh, anything that the company owns so the buildings, buildings plants cash bank balance all those things are comes into assets of the company on the other side liabilities can be like if they have taken any secured non-secured loans if they have any payable amount that they have to pay any tax effort which they haven't paid mm -hmm. so all these things will come in the liabilities side so looking into the balance sheet you can tell that how much assets the company has or whether it has a lot of debt it owes a lot so again this is very important one and the third is cash flow statement so cash flow statement basically tells you where the cash is going uh, whether you are investing cash is coming in flow or outflow through its operational investing or finances so this is the part of financial statement from these financial statements financial ratios are derived so if you do not want to look into all these financials uh, people have created shortcut for example return on equity it basically tells you how much your returns you are getting based on the equity yeah. that you have invested so if a roe is greater than 15 20 percent average roe for the last three five years it's a very good company. it's a very good company so here you do not look into look into the profits of the company or um, or the equity directly looking into the ratio you can see similarly current ratio current ratio tells you how much the ratio of current assets by current liabilities so all these ratios a lot of ratios are there there are more than 200 ratios that yeah. are there but a lot of investors have their own checklist they look into top 10 to 15 ratios to pick a company so again this is another lingo that you should know some of the financial ratios that you can check it out is like a p ratio price to earnings ratio price to book value ratio debt to equity ratio return on assets return on capital employed so these are some of the key ratios maybe we will discuss about these in another video yeah. there are that many ratios <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and another concept that you should know is the concept of moat so moat is like sustainable competitive advantage that a company should have compared to its competitor so it's basically like what this company is doing differently compared to competitors which is keeping its profitable a lot of time it can be different things like cost advantage if the company is able to produce goods and services at a lower cost compared to its competitors they are going to remain uh, the competitors cannot outperform them and they will be able to remain profitable for a long time this is in the case of companies like dmart they are able to save a lot of money on their lands and all mm -hmm. and provide a cheaper products compared to their competitors Maruti Suzuki is another example of the automobile sector. Automobile. Yes. So these are the companies who are able to remain profitable because they have a very good cost advantage compared to their competitors. Other things can be brand value and tangible assets. If a company has a very big brand value, which the competitors cannot break, it can, it can be another profitable thing. Switching cost again comes like uh, if the product is very difficult for the company, for the people or users to switch. For example, everyone uses Microsoft Excel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to switch it from some from Excel to another language, even though if it's a very easier one, better than Excel, people will not have, switch yeah. because we have to teach Excel to everyone. Yes. If we have to implement in our company, even if other one is free, will not switch. That's true. So yeah. a, a lot of time, IT companies enjoy this benefit. If a company has got a tender or any. Uh, offered a product or services to any big company b2b b2c anything the customer do not want to switch from that company to the other one because the switching cost will involve a lot of training to their employees teaching everything the new product how it works and all so a lot of time they do make advantage of that one photoshop yeah. <laughs> that is again adobe if everyone whoever is using a photoshop they will not want to switch to some something else this is kind of like competitive advantage moat so again when you are looking for a company to invest you should look into what are the kind of moat 
the company has which keeps the company profitable this is again some lingo that you should know we'll uh, cover the ratios in another video because there are that many ratios and explaining each one will take a lot of time so uh, like as they said it takes you know each investor has their own uh, style of looking at the ratios so with time when you start using these ratios and, st and studying financial statements of companies you will also develop a pattern of what you want to look for in a company and we might even show that to you in this video <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, very simple and very important. How do you know if a company is financially fundamentally strong? Uh, so there are a lot of factors that you need to look into. Not just one factor will define a company is fundamentally strong or bad. So uh, I'll first start with the most basic screening. Like there are five thousand more than five thousand companies into that. I have a basic checklist of ten eight ten ratios that I use and uh, it also varies based on the industry that you are choosing so if they fulfill the basic ratios like if they have a very good roe of more than 15 percent roc of more than 15 percent their sales or profit has been continuously growing more than 12 to 15 percent for last five years their debt is zero so these factors i look into basically for screening the company then comes the company's business model <laughs> yeah, yeah, <that's> so, <laughs> so you need to understand look into the company's business what does it do how it is do how it is generating revenue what are its main product and services for example if you look into paytm and all you have to look into they are into a lot of things they are doing a lot of things but you have to do a lot of thorough analysis ki haan, whether their main business is uh, upi yes. banking or malls or all the things that they are doing so understanding the business model of the company for some of the companies business model is very straightforward car company automobile company. they sell cars they sell cars simple and all. <laughs> uh, for retail companies also it's very simple ki haan, what they are selling and all but for some it becomes very complex if you yeah. get into pharma companies it becomes like what are the medicine they are selling the different you kinds have to get into that you have to study, <laughs> that. study yeah. that one and similarly for it also you have to understand what are their products who are their clients business model so but again this is very important part that understanding the uh, business model of a company and you should be comfortable and happy with their business what they are doing if you are not understanding the business what they do there's no point you cannot judge the company based on that one yeah. so second is how strong is their business model what are their main product services and all and here you again you need to see whether the product and services are sustainable for long term or not if someone is doing in the case of zomato or ptm and all you need to do a lot of sustainable uh, research whether the same services people will be using 15 20 years from now or not if you are investing for that long horizon yeah. if you're investing for three four years i think that will be fine but um, that also should you should keep in mind so after finding this these two like basic financial ratios second is business model then comes the financial statements analysis here i'll look into the companies or everything how much is the top line revenue how much it's generating year on year on the last five year how much is operational profit how much it's uh, gross profit then then comes how much uh, taxes they are paying how much the total profit is there in the balance sheet i will look into how much debt they are owing how much cash they are keeping in town if they are into yeah, in retail or in automobile, I'll look into inventories, how much they are spending on inventory and all. So overall, analyzing the financial statements of the company, how strong are the financials, balance sheet of a company. If I'm happy with the financials, then I'll move forward to understand the management of the company. So basically, management are the leaders. They should have a very clear vision and mission for the company. If you are running an paint industry <laughs> you should have a vision to become the biggest paint industry and you should not divert from paint to something else in between so and even from the management you need to understand like uh, uh, you have to do basic google search first of all to understand who are the ceos cfos management other board of directors any scam or fraud in they are involved in That's current cool. scam or past scam if anything is scam involved just leave that company red flag, <laughs> red flag. there are over 5000 companies in the share market <laughs> pick someone else with us <laughs> where you do not have to get into that one then you have to look into how much is the holding of the promoters how much stake they hold in the company if they have placed any shares 
there uh, if the placing is high or low so basically you have to understand the management whether you can trust this management so that they can lead the make it more profitable in future or not a lot of time a good company might not be a good investment if you are paying too much so for example uh, iphone can be a good product but if you are paying 5 lakh instead of <laughs> one lakh whatever is current price is you overpaid for a good product yeah, yeah. paid for a good product and it will not give you that return similarly it comes here also a lot of time the products and services the company can be very good but you have to wait for the company to uh, to come at the right valuation so that you can purchase if even if uh, if it if it's overvalued if you think it's very high just keep it in your watch list wait for market always gives opportunities at least two to three times in a year it will give some correction and all wait for those opportunities you'll be able to buy so huh, these are the five things i always look into the companies uh, financial ratios then their business model their management financial statement analysis and finally the valuation before picking investing in any stock the fair market value fair value okay that covers the five things we look at here yeah. what's the difference between fundamental and technical analysis uh, the biggest uh, difference is the view of the people so if you are investing for the long term six month one year two year ten years you need to look into the fundamentals of the company technical analysis is usually used for short term if you are intraday trader swing trader short term horizon and all so let me explain technical analysis first so in technical analysis you give no importance to companies financials fundamentals how much what's the business model who is the management who is the ceo valuation and all here you just look into the charts that the stock is currently trading at 400 rupees momentum is going higher stock prices is going higher all the indicators are saying that it's going it will go from 400 to 410 and you take a trade and you make benefit so here a lot of all the day traders uh, if you are do, doing day trading buying right now buying in the daytime during the, the Ma same market session open, uh, market yeah. session you'll be using technical analysis because you don't care about the fundamentals you're not going to hold it for the long term even if the uh, stock is bad you are anyway going to sell the stock by the end of the day yeah. <laughs> it, will, it will not affect you so technical analysis is basically used by traders who are into the short term point of view fundamental analysis all the big analysis overall analysis is used by those people who are of the long term view and who want to have good sleep keeping good strong companies in their in their demat account in their portfolio so you might have seen people using a lot of charts using a lot of indicators yeah. so, <laughs> so those people are the day traders they just look into how, what's happening in the market whether the market is going high or low whether how much is the momentum how is the volume and all and they just want to book quick profit and then book the profit and, and get out of the market yeah. so to them it doesn't matter because uh, they want to hold the stock tomorrow <laughs> yeah they will not hold <laughs> So for them, technical analysis matters, but for a person who wants to park their money into an asset and then just look at it after like book profits after some significant amount of time, it could be one month, it could be six months, it could be years, it could take any amount of time. For them, fundamental analysis is fundamental. very important. Yeah. Sure. So don't play with money thinking technical and fundamental are the same please ha, here again first of all you need to define whether you are an investor or trader if you are an investor pick fundamental analysis if you are a trader stick to technicals and all if you want to become both then learn both of them it's it's all the you know it's better if you want to learn both you know there are sources available to teach you both it's it's good for you itself in the long term you can book profits on the on the daily as well if you have the time and you can also park your profits into fundamentally strong companies for the long term as well. So if you have that much interest, you can check out FinGrad. We have courses that teach you both. So you can check out those courses on short term trading. That is, uh, we have a lot of courses actually. So I can't even list them out. So do check it out. Yeah, if you want to learn both technical analysis or fundamental analysis, we have courses on our FinGrad learning platform. But an interesting thing that Karan said is like, if you have time, so most of the people who have a job who are working 9 to 5 the market timing is also between 9 to 3 30 you cannot stick in front of computer and they take yeah. trades but uh, investing can be done you can pick stock become free and all so a lot of time like investing is trading is mostly like a full-time job 
so here it's not like uh, you can take a trade and make profit in one hour and all you have to stick in front of the uh, screen from 9 15 a.m to 3 30 time frame uh, you cannot do another job in that time frame basically until you close off the position you have to be in front of you have to be in front yeah. of the uh, camera in front of your screen so huh, def definition again comes whether you have time or not <laughs> yes that is very important if you have the time but otherwise investing yes you can uh, yeah investing you can pick stocks into them we can, even on weekends you can do fundamental analysis whether market is open or closed it doesn't matter to you yes all the fundamental data everything is available in the market always so there you can do even if you have a day job and the best part about fundamental analysis is, is the statements are open to everyone all you have to do is go to your company go to the investor section the financial statements are right there from a short uh, from this year all the way till five ten years it can go up to so. yeah till the time they have listed so that's why they are called public companies so all the uh, pub, all the information about their financials everything is available to public and everyone has the same information what i know same thing you can also know by going on their website looking into their investor sections and all so that's the difference between public companies for the private companies it's not required for them to share their finances yeah because they don't have an obligation they don't have an obligation but for the public companies they do share their reports everything every quarter and annual statements too yes. so not only will you receive that annual statement that comes out at the end of every financial year you also receive receive a quarterly statement that comes out every three months so there also you, you can also study the company every three months how they're performing which was a bad quarter which is a good quarter instantly you'll find out so that brings me to my next question that brings me perfectly over to my next question is how often do i need to perform fundamental statement analysis okay so uh, first of all short term fluctuations does not affect long term investors so if the market is moving up down it increased 1% today went down 1% today for long term investors fundamental analysis you do not need to perform that one the most important thing for the fundamental analyst fundamental analysis is the annual statement of the company annually on 31st march a year ends and after that the company produces its financial annual report and there it tells you how the company performed in the entire year and what's their vision and mission for the next year what they are planning to achieve next year the management the ceo they also give their writings like how this is what we are planning to achieve and how we are going to do that one so most important thing is the annual statement apart from that like you said the quarterly results also comes so every quarter you can look into uh, how the how the company performed in last three months in that quarter whether it was profitable whether it was a good quarter bad quarter and all if the company is consistently performing bad quarter by quarter year by year you can maybe pro plan to cut that company yes. if everything is doing fine quarterly their results are improving annually their results are improving you can stick the keep that company in your portfolio for the long term also but huh, here you don't need to keep into short term mind friend you just got looking into quarterly results and looking into the long term annual results are most important thing apart from that maybe you can also subscribe or look into the news what's happening with the company here also you do not need to track it every day yeah maybe you can use google alerts or just track the keywords of that company and you will directly you can directly check it out if there is a big news coming to that company but huh, that's also doesn't need to be uh, very uh, often. very often yeah. because the thing is like if you're making a profit of 40 percent even if the stock is down five percent it's not that's going to much difference like still you have 35 percent profit so thoda niche bhi hai because of bad news and all it will not affect much but for the traders who are making just day trading and all so for them 5% yeah. in a day if they have not made anything it's a big one yes. so huh, here take sufficient time uh, like we discussed in the last video most of the time the company will not go from 100 rupees to 0 rupees in a day <laughs> very unlikely <laughs> quarter by quarter if the bad news are coming if it's not sustainable you will get sufficient time to you will find out huh, that the company is declining it's not performing well and you can then put that money in someone else company if it's performing good then it's you can uh, be confident that huh, you have good stocks in your portfolio so the quarter the quarterly report tells a short story of the annual report so if you, if you see that the company has you know has like weak earnings this quarter and it has uh, weak earnings the previous quarter as well 
Then that's six months right there. That tells you where the company has gone this entire year. <laughs> What's the difference between fundamental and financial statement analysis? Fundamental analysis, financial statement analysis. So, uh, finance funda. I mean, if you see financial statement analysis, it's just a report card. That's right. Like if you are seeing the report card of any student and he has got A plus A plus A plus in everything. It tells you like, huh, good student. it's good student yeah. and all, but you might not know the other things like whether he is disciplined, a lot of other qualitative factor about that company. It's not shown in the report card of that com that student. Similarly, here also, if you're looking just fundamental uh, financial statements, you just look into huh, the company is making profit. It doesn't have debt. It has that much assets. It has that much liabilities and all. But if you want to understand more about the company, all the qualitative factors, then you have to do complete fundamental analysis. So that's where it differ. Financial analysis is a part of the fundamental analysis and it's not just looking into one thing will you will miss out on good opportunities. Yeah, this is also why um, certain brands that they have a good brand value but if you look at the financial statements they might be making losses to establish that brand. So even though that even though they do not have strong financials they still have a strong uh, share price in the market. Whereas certain companies which will still have a strong uh, financial statement, they're not necessarily will have a, you know, it will not exactly reflect in the share price as well. Sometimes. Uh, so there comes the concepts of undervalued companies yeah. so or hidden gems. Yes. So <laughs> who might be undervalued. Uh, market eventually realizes the potential of all the companies. Maybe sometime for some companies it's easy, for some companies it takes time, one or two years. But if the company is continuously performing well, for two, three, five years, eventually market will understand the true potential, true value of that company. And if you have bought that company at an undervalued price, eventually you know, when it goes to its true value, you will be able to make a lot of profit. You, you might even have a multi-bagger in your hands. Multi-bagger, yeah, huh? You never know. <laughs> yeah. yeah so that answers that. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Pretty common question, but straight on the nose. Can fundamental analysis make me rich? Uh, yes, definitely. So we have seen a lot of example of companies who has given you multi bagger returns and uh, even an investment of 1 lakh turned out to be 10 lakh and even more in that cases. So fundamental analysis will make you rich. But it's not required that it will make you rich in a, in a year or two. Uh, if you have put good effort, if you have uh, bought good stocks, fundamentally strong stocks, and if you have given it sufficient time, sufficient time to grow, it can make you rich and it can give you very good returns. Apart from the company being fundamentally strong, you also have to be mentally strong to hold on to it for that long. Yeah, here if you are looking for uh, quick bucks, <laughs> then fundamental analysis will not work for you. But in the long term, it always works. Most of the richest personalities, if you know, in the stock market, those are they use fundamentally strong stock. They have kept good stocks in their portfolio and they have generated a lot of wealth. Uh, we can see examples like Warren Buffett, Everyone knows about him. Yes. He has hold good companies for the long term. Then uh, even Rakesh Junjunwala, we couldn't, could say that he was a trader initially. He used trading to make initial money. But a lot of good substantial amount he has made by investing in good stocks and keeping it for the long term. Easiest example was Titan Company. Even for the other investors like Ramdev Agrawal, Dolly Kanna, all of them are like investors only. They are not traders who do a lot of trading. Trading can make you good bucks in short term, but eventually if you want to do a lot of, um, generate a lot of wealth over time, you have to switch to fundamental analysis and you have to go keep good fundamentally strong companies in your portfolio. Yes, and of course, when you buy a stock and you book the profit that you're expecting to, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to sell it. You can still hold on to it and it'll still grow because they also provide dividends as well. Ha, uh, dividend is again a very good concept <laughs> we discussed last time. So uh, a lot of time like if you are holding stocks for the long term, even the companies reward you by dividends, give, sharing a small amount of profit to you and it gets directly credited in your bank account. <laughs> so again, this is also a way of generating. If the company is good, fundamentally strong and all, after a few years, most of these companies will good, give good dividends to you. So perfect example was Junjunwala himself on Titan. He could have sold and booked profits long back, but he still held on to it. 
हाँ सो इवन इफ यू आर नॉट सेलिंग इट इफ द कंपनी इज गिविंग गुड डिविडेंड यू आर गेटिंग मनी वन वे और दर इट्स वेरी स्मार्ट टू होल्ड ऑन टू सच स्टॉक्स this yes since uh, we asked can if you say make me can fundamental analysis make me rich and we mentioned that you can make you rich if you're smart enough in the long term mm-hmm. on the same question what are the realistic returns investors should expect from fundamental analysis okay uh, it also dep- uh, depends a lot on like which stage you are so uh, basically like if you see uh, a return of 15 to 20% is very good every year and that too if you compound it for the next 10 to 20 years the amount will be very big you can use a simple sip calculator to find out the power of compounding of 15 to 20 percent over the years so a return of 15 to 20 percent is very good if you are a beginner if you are just starting out i think it will be even 15 20 percent in a year will be high you can plan something between 12 to 12 to 15 percent for the next first three to five years when you are starting and eventually after that you can move into higher returns 15 to 20 percent a lot of time if you are very good into investment if you are doing a very good analysis you can track even get even higher returns plus 20 is also possible a lot of people have been doing it but huh, that's not average yes that's just a one one off type of thing ha huh, those people who are really good into that one so if they are really spending a lot of time there all the things goes in their favor all the investments that they do a lot of other things are which are not in your hand also happens in the market so there it also comes but a realistic realistically speaking anything between 15 to 20 percent is very good return uh, like i said if you compare to other returns that you are getting uh, compared to like uh, fixed deposits 6.5 to 7 percent it's almost double from what you can get there yes. saving account we don't need to discuss <laughs> you already know where that leads <laughs> yeah and uh, you already know that inflation is also eating away a lot of your profit so compared to that 15 to 20 percent realistic expectations if you are getting it's very good yes. so even if i give you an example if you have invested one lakh and if you get 15 to 20 percent return in a year one lakh fifteen thousand you have you are getting 15 to 20 percent extra after three to year five four years of working if you have some uh, kept one lakh amount in your five lakh amount in your portfolio and it gives you 20 percent return again it's one lakh extra that so amazing yeah. uh, one lakh is a big amount so <laughs> that's how it's like without doing any extra effort it's like an extra two months of salary that you will yeah. get <laughs> so so huh 20 15 to 20 percent is good enough for the big for the people in the stock market yeah we mentioned in the first video as well the purpose of investing is for you to beat the market and get better returns than conservative investment opportunities like fixed deposit gold so as long as you do that and also beat inflation Mm -hmm. i think you've achieved your target right there as long as you beat those rates beat inflation beat inflation so uh benjamin graham who is also known as the father of value investing so he said that uh, basically investing is consists of two parts first is safeguarding your uh, corpus what you are investing you should not have losses <laughs> so if you are investing one lakh the most important thing is doing good fundamental analysis that and one lakh stay one lakh at least one lakh hard huh? even before thinking about making it from 1 lakh to 1 lakh 20000 think about it should not get to 80000 or 70000 yes. so first important thing was safeguarding your profit your corpus and second thing was getting subsequent or adequate returns so here when you are investing you should know that i should target 15 to 20 percent return that's good enough for me i should not be very greedy yes. <laughs> okay i want 40 to 50 percent return for that i will invest in a very risky stocks where <laughs> stocks which no one knows about penny stocks <laughs> or gamble that one so both of these things are very important and uh, i will definitely recommend you all the users to read the intelligent investor by benjamin graham the book yes it's yes. a very good book anyone starting out has to read that book it brings a lot of value for the knowledge that he's giving out and this book is not something new or is not a trend it's been written quite some time ago and his concepts still hold good today as well ha uh, so that's the most important part before getting the record returns try to safeguard your money yes. don't invest in very risky stocks plan that your 1 lakh doesn't goes to 20000 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. please be careful as well please be careful
we are coming close to the end of the video. Yes, very, very, this is extremely interesting. So, uh, of course, a lot of people have asked this question before as well. Do I need a degree to study for financial statements? Uh, no, basically, if you are doing it here for yourself, like if you are investing on your own, why do you need a degree? Yeah. You just need to have good skill and all. If you are a good swimmer, you don't need to be certified for that one. Yeah. Just you should have skill. And you should be able to do and that. Not drown. <laughs> not drown. Uh, similarly, if you're a good guitarist, why do you need a degree? If you play, if you can play well, that's yeah. proof enough. That's proof enough. Yeah. Similarly, here also you don't need a degree if you are investing for your own. You just need to have a good skill, good picking stay, stock picking skill, good fundamental analysis skills and all. And you'll be able to generate good profit. If you want to build a career, that's a totally different point. If you want to become a research analyst fund or investment advisor and all, in that cases you need to have degrees. In that case, you need to be registered with SAB. Yes. You get need to get certifications and all. So, if you want to make a career, you need the degrees for your own skill, uh, for your own profit, for own, your own investment. Focus more on developing the skill rather than taking a, taking yeah. a degree. So, those careers they require you to have a certification because you are giving advice that people will follow with which they could either make money or lose money as well. Yeah. So you don't want to be held accountable on that front. So yes, on that front you might need, but as a personal investor, you might not. Since on the back of uh, do I need a degree, since you don't need a degree, we'll also answer what you exactly you need. That is, where can I study financial statements? So where can I learn how to study financial statements? Okay, uh, for that, uh, mostly a lot of things, uh, what comes in anything that you want to learn is self-learning. You can look into a lot of resources are available on internet and all the YouTube channels and all, even on our channel and all. But if you want to get an in-depth knowledge, if you want to learn a lot about them and that too in a small time frame, you can always go to our financial learning platform, FinGrad. So on FinGrad, we have a lot of courses on fundamental analysis valuation or even stock market basics if you are a beginner so we have over 60 courses and webinars there and for that you need to take just one subscription one subscription and you will get access to all of that so i think that's an excellent platform for you to get started and the best part you do not have a timeline there you can just set your own timeline take up the courses when you want finish it at your own pace and get certified and also value for money and yeah value for money so check out fingrad <laughs> Alright guys, that's all for this video. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and of course to subscribe. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe our channel. <laughs> okay, thank you so much guys.